Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melissa Andre. I'm the Executive Director of the Tax Review Board, and we are convening our first session of the month of March. Um, today is March 2nd of 2023. With me today is Board Chair Nancy Cameradiner, um, Board Members Paula Weiss, Dominique Ward, and Ryan Boyer, and we are here for the tax category of refuse. Please be aware that this is a public hearing. It is being recorded. Because the meeting is public, participants and viewers have no expectation of privacy. And by continuing to be in this meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. At this time, I'm going to give um, the microphone to our board chair, Nancy Gamardiner. And I'm also going to walk over and put in case number two, which is the first case we'll be doing today. So if everybody could just hold tight and we can start promptly. Good afternoon, everyone. As Melissa has indicated, this is the Tax Review Board hearing for March 2nd, 2023, dealing with refuse cases. The first petitioner to be here in our offices is case number two. And uh, Nancy, hold on. Just hold on. OK. <laughs> if you could just announce the case when it's going to be here. All right. Did you have a seat? Try to speak very loudly in the, in the microphone. You can take off that mic because you're going to be in here by yourself. Okay. And um, just make sure to keep your voice really loud for the court reporter. Sure. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, we're going to start. case number two for Emmanuel Gonzalez. Last four digits of the docket, 6215, property address 4125 Levick Street. Please identify yourself for the record. Emmanuel Gonzalez. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? Yes. Okay, thank you. Who has this matter for the city? Uh, Yim Peng, representing the city of Philadelphia. Do you have anyone with you who will need to be sworn? Yeah, uh, Ms. Stephanie Gordine. Okay, please identify yourself for the record. I... Ms. Gordine, you're on mute. And Ms. Gordine, can you please put your camera on? If you're going to be testifying, your camera needs to be on. Thank you. Hey, my name is Stephanie Gordine. I'm a representative for the City of Philadelphia Revenue Department. Thank you. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, I believe it will, that we're starting here with case number two. And um, if you could provide the numbers for the record. That would be appreciated. Okay. Uh, there is no balance due. I'm sorry. They did. Yeah, there's no that balance due. No balance at all? Yes. Was if something paid they, recently? They, they made payments from 2015 through 17 in the amount of $1,013.63. Um, 2018 to 2021, they applied for refuge exemptions. And was that granted? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Gonzalez, did you realize that you had satisfied the obligations for the accounts that were due and owing? So uh, when I was here last time, uh, I was told that there was a balance that I did not qualify for the, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, the exemption. Uh -huh. uh, and at that time, I was told that I would have to make payments on the balance because um, I was meant to pay it. So then uh, when they granted me, when they provide me with this, this document here that tells me the years that uh, the exemption is for, uh, I went across the street to get which would have been uh, 2022's exemption form or find out how I can get that letter. Um, I went over and the clerk that helped me that day after the hearing. Uh, yes, I did send copies of this with the, which call it? I have several. Um, I went across to Dilworth Plaza and I went to go get copies of that form. And the clerk at that time looked into it and she said, the, the individual who I tried to explain last time at the hearing, um, who told me I had an exemption, um, basically she entered something in error and they corrected the mistake on their end that day and gave me the updated exemption for for the dates that I was meant to be exempt for. Okay, and 
neither the city people you were talking with or or you then contacted the tax review board i guess is that why we don't know about this at this point in time until you came here today correct at the time at the last hearing i was ordered to pay the remaining balance after that i went across to deal with right. okay at that time the the clerk let me know that there would be nothing i needed to do that if I was to receive a bill, not uh, to disregard it, but I still had received uh, the, I guess the court document asking if I wanted to challenge it. So I did it because I feared okay. still getting penalized. So Mr. Gonzalez, the because we want I'm sorry, Nancy, the city's testimony or the city's information and testimony is that the balance is now zero. You have the exemption um, from this fee. And does that satisfy you as to the matter? Oh, Paula, I guess he's saying that he's still receiving bills in the mail. Melissa, could you go out there and, and make sure? Because I, I, the anxiety comes when they tell him this at a hearing, but then he gets a, a letter in the mail stating that he has penalties. And being a good taxpayer and citizen he is, it, it, it makes him worry. Right. Well, what I did get from the petitioner are letters from the city of Philadelphia, city of Philadelphia there, uh, the last two letters are dated January 26th of 2022, where it's very clear that he's been given the exemptions for 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. And then the only thing I would assume is that in 23, he has to go back down there and get another exemption. Well, let me ask a question then. Mr. Gonzalez, do you live in this property? I do. Always have since I purchased the property. Okay. Then I would ask the city, does he need to, is, is that now reflected in the city's records? Because as a homeowner who's living in the property, he shouldn't have to file every single year. Uh, the, the, we, we did have, we received all the exemptions from 2018 to uh, 2021. And then um, currently 2022, uh, there's, uh, there's no refuse fee. And 2023, uh, first half, there's no refuse fee. It's all zeroed out. Okay, so completely the, all zero tax penalty. There's basically the entire balance is zero, and that's because it's now reflected as a um, owner occupied residence. Uh, let me double. Uh, um, let me just. Gordon, can you can you check that? It's actually listed as a multifamily. A multifamily, he would still have to submit a uh, an exemption form. An exemption was submitted for 2022 and 2023. Okay, so all right, Mr. Gonzalez, so you live in this property, but it's multifamily units. It's more than one. Correct. Okay, so then I guess then let's go back there. So then to follow through on Mr. Boyer's concern, then are you aware and you're you understand that every year you do need to file the exemption request? Yes, when I originally went to deal with the clerk did instruct me that I would have to do so. Okay, so it sounds like 2020, like 2023 is already taken care of. I submitted a form in January and sent it by post. I haven't received anything back, but after today, I plan to go get a copy. Okay, and then so obviously then every year you need to file that in order to receive the exemption. It sounds like the city's got that in their records. Is that correct, Mr. Ping? Yes. Just, just a question. I know that you have it listed as multifamily, but do, do you, or do, let me try to figure out how to phrase it. Are all of the units actually occupied by your family or do you have tenants in those other sections? By my family, my mother and my siblings live with me there. Okay. Because I'm wondering if, if there should be some sort of petition to have the multifamily removed, but I, I don't know whether that's desirable or feasible in this instance. And that's why I was asking. May not be necessary. To have to go every year and, and get it exempted, if there's one some way of identifying that the entire property is used by one family, it would make more sense instead of having to go back annually. Can the city comment on that or take a look at that? That wouldn't be handled. I'm sorry. No, Were you speaking ahead. to me? Yeah. That wouldn't be handled by the revenue department. You would have to take it up with the Office of Property Assessment. Agreed. I think that's an Office of Property Assessment determination and not um, something that the Department of Revenue, because if he were to sell the property tomorrow, the next person could then rent it out to two families. 
so, so basically, uh, if if he wanted to get away from that, he would have to go to the Office of Property Assessment and and provide evidence that this was a, a property with one family. But if that looks like it might not be the case going forward, he should leave it as it is and do the annual. Would that be a, an appropriate? I think your... that. I believe that the determination regarding whether or not it's a multifamily is something that is up to the OPA. So for right now, I think his only real course of action is to constantly reach out to the Department of Revenue right. every year and let them know how the property is being used. Okay. Right. So Mr. Gonzalez, is that, does that satisfy your concerns? Yeah, it's a small inconvenience and I have to deal with getting the, the notifications of being- Okay, but, but as far as we're concerned today, th there's no action needed by this board because everything is already in place. And it's a shame you had to come in for this, but it, it's probably good for you to have this uh, uh, supported and, and in our records as well. Yes, definitely. I appreciate it. That I, That's what I needed to hear because it's been bothering me for the last three plus years. Right. Constantly well, wondering I, I'm going to get another one. I, I'm sorry that uh, you've had to deal with that, but I'm glad to hear that uh, we're we're on the road to helping you get that resolved so that you know uh, that everything's fine right now. And if you do want to get this removed so you don't have to do it annually, you need to go and talk with the people at the Office of Property Assessment and, and see what needs to be done in order to make that a longer term piece. That part of it would be up to you in terms of what you see as the future use of the property. Okay, thank you. So Nancy, Thank you very much for coming in today. If, if the decision is no action needed, this is Paula Weiss. I concur. Ryan Boyer, I concur. Dominic Ward, I concur. And Nancy Camerdiner, I concur. So the board concurs in this uh, for the record. Thank you. Thank you. The next case is case number three. I'm going to put them in the room. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to make sure you got the request. Sure. Well, you can use this one right here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see in the middle seat. Try to keep your voice nice and loud for the microphone. Okay. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Give you a moment to get comfortable. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next item on our agenda is case number three for Tracy Alston, last four digits of the dock at 6205. Property address is 6317 Morton Street. Um, please identify yourself for the record. Hi, hi, I'm Tracy Alston. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, you're certainly uh, welcome to keep your mask on, but if you're comfortable uh, to be there by yourself without the mask, <clears throat> it might make it easier for us to hear and understand what you're saying as we go forward. Um, who has this matter for the city? Ian Payne represents the city of Philadelphia, and my witness is uh, still Stephanie, Miss Stephanie Gordine. Oh, okay, so uh, she's already been sworn. So let's turn to her. Please uh, provide the uh, numbers for the record, please. Okay. The principal is $4,200. The penalty, $2,716.52. The interest is $1,877.54. There's a credit of payments in the amount of $1,324.64 leaving a balance of $7,469.42. What years? I'm sorry. Um, these are for the years. You talking about the payments or you talk the... Uh... Well, if you could, uh, that credit, if you could repeat the dollar amount and what period it, co it covered and then give us the time period for the uh, remaining amounts. The credit is a total of one thousand three hundred twenty-four dollars and sixty-four cents. Okay, thank you. Payments, payments were made in two thousand 
2021, both periods, December and June, 2020, both periods, December and June, 2019, both periods, 2017, both periods, and then there was a payment in December of 2011. 2011, did you say? Yes. And, and so 2011, 19, 20, and 21, all of those had payments that were made? Yes. Under that $1,324? Yes. Okay. So the years at issue are 12? Uh, if I may, there's okay. actually something else uh, with this case uh, that would alter the periods. Uh, we will be will be in dispute. Uh, I would like to uh, address the board about this issue. Uh, may I? Yes, please. Um, for this case, first of all, um, it, it appears from the petition, the actual language of the petition, the petitioners is actually appealing for interest and penalty instead of a, a merit. I think the, the the designation of the case seems to be suggesting is a, a merit dispute. That's uh, the first issue. Uh, the second issue is. The majority of the period, uh, 2011 to 2016 and 2018 to 2019, has been addressed in the previous uh, TRB case. The case number is for the uh, the IMP session of these of these periods has been addressed in the previous case. The case number is uh, 14 STIMP ZZ A723. And, and again, which years are covered under that? Uh, 2011 to 2016. 2018 to 2019. Can you give me a moment, Mr. Payne, so I can pull this case? Of course. So Mr. Payne, while Ms. Andre is doing that, there's still a balance, principal balance of $4,200, um, it, it appears. What years does that cover? That covers, appears to be, that covers 2011 to uh, 2011, 2011 to 2023, uh, minus the amount uh, Ms. Gordine just said uh, what was being paid. And then in 2015, uh, where, 2015, where there is no uh, refuse fee. So uh, if the case checks out, um, the disputed period should be only 2020 and 2021, 2022. And first half of 2023. For interest and penalty purposes. Yes. Because I think that. So that's 2020, 2021, and 2022 are the only ones left. And since this is uh, March 2nd, I'm assuming the first half of the 2023 is due to? Yes. Just not due till June. Um, thank you, Mr. Pang. I pulled it and you are correct. Uh, 11 through 18 is has been already um, adjudicated by the board. Um, that decision was rendered in April, um, April 8th of 2019. What about uh, 2019? Oh, Sandra. and 2019, I apologize. 2018, 2019, correct. So um, 2011 to 2019. Interest and penalty only, or was that a merits petition or an IMP petition? That was a, a, a merit interest and penalty, all three. Okay, all three. Uh, and what was the decision? It was to abate 25% of the interest, 100% of the penalty for the years 2011 to 2016, and then 2018 to 2019. Okay. I, I think, um, I think uh, we were given a very large principle so perhaps if we could just get the interest and penalty for the years in the petition, that would be helpful. Yeah, Ms. Gordon, can you uh, recalculate just the interest and penalty for the uh, 2020 to 2022? There are 2020 and 2022? 2022, 2022, sorry. Well, 2021 and 22, wasn't it? The three? Uh, yeah, yeah, 2020, 2021, 2022. And so we, we probably should have new numbers for all of the categories for those so that we're clear on only those years being uh, at, at uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for only those being 
having trouble talking, <laughs> but only those years being before us today. My apologies. <clears throat> so what am I recalculating? The just the 2020 and 2021 2022s refuse fee for principal uh, penalty and interest and penalty. For the whole year, you said interest and penalties or everything? Everything for three years. Plus the first half of 23. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. Is that even due yet? Uh, I believe that CE fees are due at the, begin, before, at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the period instead of the end of the period. So it would have been due in January? Correct. Ms. Alston, do you understand what we've been talking about? Um, you were here in um, at a prior hearing for a lot of these bills and um, charges already, and the board already issued a decision in 2019, which we cannot go back and revisit. Okay. Okay, so it sounds from the city's information in our own files that the only years that we can actually discuss are 2020, 21, 22, and I guess the first half of 23, if that's still due and owing. Okay, so what's due for 20? I think, did I pay 20? Which, what years did I pay? Because she said I paid some years. Um, 2017, 2019, 2020, 2021. And there was a payment in 2011. Okay, so some of it was, I was also in bankruptcy some throughout some of those times. So it, some of those times, they wouldn't accept the payment. And when was that? I was in, I was in bankruptcy for 16, 16 to 18, 16 to 18. And ten and no eight. I think it was eight and ten. Eight, eight, eight to uh, wait a minute. Was it fourteen, sixteen? It might have been fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Like I don't, I can't. Um, I don't know off the top of my head because I don't really remember. But Austin, what is it that you're here for today? What is it that I you're don't know? For? I don't know because I came to a hearing and then I think you guys said that I'd come back to another hearing. So only thing I was trying to do was honestly just get some of the penalties and interest off, and I just wanted to finish paying my bill off. That's okay. all. So tell us, what kind of property is this? This is a um, duplex. A duplex. Do you live in it? No, I don't. You rent it out? Yes. Okay. And so you've got tenants in two different units, an upstairs and a downstairs, I assume? At times. Sometimes it has been empty. Like, it has been vacant, so no one was living here. Okay. So, yeah, but so how of, did all of this um, delinquent billing come about? Um, the delinquent billing came about due to lack of income. Due to lack of income, nobody's occupying the place. And then um, working, COVID, COVID hit, COVID affected a lot of it. And then being in bankruptcy at one time or another. Okay. And Did are you going to begin paying these bills now? Yeah. So now I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to get everything straightened out. Okay. Have you paid 2023? Not yet, but I know. Okay. But did we address, we addressed a, a large portion of the penalty and some of the interest the, the last time we saw this case, right? The master had heard it and the master did abate the some of the interest in the penalty. But those earlier years weren't before us? At the no. Full board? Well, no, not before the full board. It was a, a, a mass. But, but we no longer have jurisdiction over those given the time passage of time. So Correct. the only things we, we're dealing with today are for 2021, 20, 22, and the first half of 23. Interesting penalty. Uh, actually, I think 2020 is too, because uh, 
Yeah, it took the, it was a year 2020, I think. 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Ms. Gordine, do you have the figures for us? Can we One confirm second. this before? If council's saying, I think, we need to know exactly what years are at issue and that we're actually adjudicating today. So uh, can we confirm what the uh, years at issue are? Yeah, it is 2020, 2021, 2022, and first half of 2023, because the decision, uh, the 2019 decision was for years 2011 to 2016 and 2018 to 2019. So 2020 to first half of 2023 is uh, hasn't adjudicated. Thank you. Ms. Gordine, what are the numbers that are due and owing today? $1,197.10. That is that principal? It's everything. Principal, interest, penalties, everything. Oh, okay. Usually you give us a separation. That's why <laughs> I was expecting that to be. First in the penalty separated out, please. For the principal, it's $1,550. And I'm sorry, yeah, $1,550. 50, $1,550? Yes. Um, Interest and penalty? $149.40 would be the penalty. Interest is $64.20 is the interest. And the figure you gave us before, um, can't be the total amount due because it was less than the than the principal that you just gave us. All right, let me see. I must have missed something then. Let me do it. Mr. Pang, was there any other information? Well, Mr. Gordini is doing this. Is there any other information you want to provide to the board? Uh, let me check. Uh... Ms. Alston, is there anything else you want to tell us about what happened here? No, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what happened. I'm just trying to um, resolve this issue. So any help that you guys can provide, you know, reducing the interest and penalty, and then I can just move forward. Okay. Trying to get a point. Will um, any of this be document, documented so I can, I was trying oh, yes. to some other well, once we reach a decision, you'll get a letter with all the information. So just hang tight for a minute. Okay. All right. I was trying to write it down. <laughs> That's right. You'll get you'll get a letter. We'll definitely send you whatever the decision but, ends up. But first, be. we have to get the numbers straight so that we get the right things approved. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else you want to provide? Me? Mr. Peng. Oh. Uh, I believe that's all needed for now. Can we go back? Do we have verification on the, the numbers? Because initially she told us the total due, at least what I wrote down was $1,197.10. But when she gave us the breakdown, it was $1,550. So I'd like to know which one is the correct number for the principal amount that's due. <laughs>
for the principal, I have $1,550. For the penalty, $149.40. And the interest is $77.70. Okay, that's different from, the interest is different from before, but uh, the last time around, you gave us the same numbers for the principal and the penalty, but the interest is a little bit more. Okay, thank you very much. The board's going to step aside and see about making a decision. Okay, is everyone oh, can Excuse me. Oh, no, uh, you needed to in, provide some additional information, Mr. Peng, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, can I do a brief uh, direct with my witness to basically sure. establish foundation? All right, uh, Ms. Cordeen, uh, give me a second. Have you had an opportunity to review the petitioner's account? Yes, I did. Uh, who owns this property? Tracy Alston. Uh, what kind of property is 6317 Morton Street? It's a commercial property. Are, are such properties subject to refuse collection fees? Yes, they are. Is there a refuse account for this property? Yes. Was the account closed, ever closed? No. Uh, where did the refuse fee bills mail to during the disputed years? To the property of the address, 6317 Morton Street. The petitioner ever request any exemption from the refuse fee? No. Uh, was there an exemption on 2018 application at least? There are no exemptions on the on the property. Okay. There were no exemptions. Uh, uh, that's all the question I have. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else from board members before we step aside? No, but the petitioner has a question, Miss. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. My apologies. Oh, that's okay. The address is supposed to be um, 6604 North 12th Street. So maybe that might be a problem on how come I wasn't receiving the mail. Because the address, that's where this letter came for the court hearing. So the address then changed. So I don't, I'm not sure. The what we have here for the property address is 6317 Morton Street. Is that a correct address for the property? That's the property address, but that's not a co correct address for me. Okay, Ms. Alston, so you need Ms. To Alston, Ms. Alston um, the address that you have here is was what you put on your petition when you filed the hearing. This address that Ms. Gordon is talking about is the address that you have on the city records. So you would have to go back to the mis municipal services building and change your address with the city. No, I receive all my mail. My mail comes. I received this letter at sixty six oh four. That's how I know about the hearing. No, I understand that, but you're saying you're not getting the bill. No, well, I probably got to go back to see because you're right. Because I have well, right. I'm explaining to you that this it, we have your address because you filled out a petition here in our office. Okay. But that's not linked to the city system, which is where they're sending the billing. So okay. if you need to update where your bills are going, you have to go to municipal services building. Okay. All right. All right. The board is going to go back now. Okay, Nancy, everyone is back. Okay, thank you. The board's reached a decision. It's our decision to both to abate both the interest and the penalty. 
and ask for payment arrangements within 30 days. Basically, what will happen, you'll get a letter from us that spells out our decision. Both sides do have the right to appeal to the Court of Common Pleas within 30 days of the date of that letter. But I'm going to assume for the moment that um, no one is going to appeal. And if that proves to be the case, then at the end of that 30 day period or even within it, if both sides are amenable to working on it, um, arrangements should be made for paying the principal. And um, you'll uh, so you'll get a letter from us that spells out this decision. And uh, we would hope that you can work together after the uh, letter arrives and you've seen the numbers that uh, you can reach an agreement on how that uh, remaining principal balance will be paid. Ryan Boy, I concur. I hope that uh, this can be resolved very quickly between both um, you as the petitioner and, and the city. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you. Dominic Ford, I concur. Ryan Boy, I concur. Paula Weiss, I concur. And Nancy Camerdiner, I concur. I'm sorry, I have a tendency to forget to add that every time. So I appreciate my fellow board members uh, prodding to uh, indicate that they've concurred in the decision. I don't know if we have anyone for one, four or five, but I guess Melissa's checking for us. Okay, number five. Uh, Better than microphone. Okay. I know they're like, they don't make them like this. Okay. You both can just make sure to stay really loud um, in front of the microphone. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, this is for case number five, last four digits of the docket 6243. The property address is 4300 Lancaster Avenue. We have it down for Lavinia Bryant. Uh, is that uh, who is with us today? Okay. okay. Oh, um, Bryant, please. Do you right swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? I affirm, yes. Okay, and with you, if you would identify yourself for the record. Carla Bryant, please. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth with everything that comes before the board? I do, yes. Okay, fine. Um, and uh, I don't know if you're comfortable taking the mask off. We, uh, If you are, we'd be able to hear you a little better, but you're not required to take it off if you're not comfortable doing so. Thank you very much. Who has this matter for the city? Uh, Yim Peng represents the city of Philadelphia. And my witness is, again, is, is Stephanie, Miss Stephanie Gordine. Okay, she's already been sworn. So um, if you could give us the numbers for the record, please. The principal is $1,950. The penalty, $2,915.70. The interest, $2,098.50, with a total of $6,964.20. Can you repeat the penalty and can you tell us the years that this period covers? The penalty, $2,915.70. The penalty covers... But no, no, not just the penalty, the, the entire thing you read into the record, what that covers. Which years? The, 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 uh, the case years, 2010 through 16. I'm sorry, 2010 through 2016. Thank you. Okay, but there's nothing for 17 and after. This, yes, correct. This correct. Okay. Um, does the city have any other opening comments before we turn to the petitioner? Uh, just briefly. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, first, uh, the city object to non pro consideration and ask the board to reject the petition as out of out of date unless the petitioner can affirmatively show that the he, she received neither received actual constructive constructive notice of these charges until uh 60 days before the petition date 
and uh, um, uh, 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 and uh, the city uh, would like to remind the uh, the board that um, it is petitioner's uh, burden proof to prove that he she her property qualifies any of the SE SE exemptions, okay. and that's the opening. Did did we have a non proton petition that we uh, signed off on at the board? Yes. This was approved by you. I, you know, I, I but I don't remember. Who, I, that's why I was asking. I know that I would have signed it, but I don't remember individual case names. Uh, yeah, no, it was approved uh, in uh, September of 2021. OK, uh, unless uh, other members of the board want to counter it, we we have um, a, approved a non proton petition that would let us go forward as as if it were in that earlier time period. Well, why don't we turn to Ms. Bryant um, and ask either either of you, can you explain to us this bill is from 2010 to 2016 that you're here for, but you didn't file a petition or, or seek to challenge it until 2021. Can you explain to us the time delay? Hi, I'm going to speak for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm kind of responsible for reading most of those documents. So, so you said 2010 through 16, I had surgery and I came out of work in 2013 and I put in, um, I forget what you call it, but I put in a document for, at the city somebody told us about and said she, that my mom could be exempted because she resided there. And before she resided there, my sister-in-law resided there with the kids. <laughs> Everybody thinks since this property was gifted to my mom that they are entitled to it too. And she got it from my grandma, and you know how that goes with family. I, I don't know if y'all know how it goes, but I do have a um, what is this letter? I have a letter from like my sister in law who lived there at one time with the kids, so she was a resident. Now, I was advised by uh, an employee downtown who told me, Hey, you know, if you live there, you can put in for an exemption or some sort, whatever they have going on now that, that your records might show from 2016 up to now. That's because she was residing there. Now, she's physically not there now because of some construction work that's going on. Um, it was an accident from the roof going down. That's another story. But no business has been, nobody's been in business there for like ever. And so I got, this is a family house. One, okay, okay, one family dwelling. It's not an apartment building. It's not. Oh, it's a storefront house. Pardon me? It's a what? Storefront. So like the front of the building is like it used to be a store some years ago. But, so, but is it used as a store? No, I got I got pictures from some years back that'll that'll show you that nobody's been so, so in that time period, if that space was used at all, it was used by the family for the family. Storage. Everybody that was in our family, and I can get more letters if y'all need it. They was bringing and dumping their stuff there. Um, my grandma, can we use the store? We we go now. We pick the storage. I got plenty of. I can get all the proof you need. Trust me. So, but, do you have a copy by any chance of whatever uh, form or document is that you filed in 2013 with the city? I'm not sure if I have that particular form with me, but it's called the um, owner occupied or something like that. And that was with my mom using the um, because when she lived there, she had a um. So you know how you low income and they want to allow you. Oh, okay. Did you approve for that? Listen, I got all of that approved. I came out of out for surgery. So my mom was, she's on dialysis now. So she started on dialysis like nine years ago. So during that time, nothing was going right. Her vision went, all that. So I got, when I got out of work, I stayed out of work. And I just started applying for everything that, they, they hooked me up at the city downstairs. They hooked me up and said, hey, you know what? You need to apply for this, apply for this. So we did. She got a tax exemption, so her, her she gets discounts. She um, had a water uh, bill, like a, something called a tax program. I don't know if y'all you are all familiar with it, but she was getting a pay loan, so they based everything on her income, which was good for us, right? And then, um, so she couldn't get any of that with electrical gas until they invited us to we invited them to come and inspect the store downstairs, which they did, and they confirmed that, okay, nobody's here, nobody's on business, so they allowed her, which I have a letter on my email that I was out there trying to look for, but they approved her for that, and this was... Like, All right, so she is on tap. Yes. Well, not like six minutes, because she, she couldn't live there because she had an accident. 
So she's back in a, she's not living there. Nobody knows. Okay, but when she, but for the years we're talking about, um, what years? 2010 to 16. 2010 to 2016. So she yeah. had, well, yeah. the problem was like 21 months a month. Yeah. Yeah. But there would have been an UPA available. That's true. I'm familiar with that. She has that now. She's paying 45 bucks a month and they, and that's it. And we don't even have to pay the back bill. All they want is 40. So, I can call to make sure. That's real is. estate taxes, correct? Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are for your real estate taxes. So, and you know when she was first approved for that? I applied in 2013. I'm thinking like probably 14. I apologize. I don't, I, I may have. Okay, that's, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's um, fine. When so, did she actually move into the property originally? Like 2000 maybe. Matter of fact, I was living there in, let's see, Mira was born in 95. She was like four. So I was living there in 99 with her. And, and was I, there a business in 99? We haven't, no. we haven't had that spot in business since my grandma left in 82, 83 maybe. And then she gifted the property to my mom in 1996. Okay. So your testimony today is that you have not had a business operating in that front part of the property since at least 1996. Right. I got some pictures I can show you. Now, now my mom had a, um, uh, Here's the inside of the store. I don't know if y'all can see it. No, we, we can't. It, it's we can't okay. really see that. I, I thought I would see somebody live today. I didn't know it was virtual, but um, no. So she, nobody's been in the business in there. Okay, okay. That, oh. that's oh. what we need from the for, from your testimony. Huh? Okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can I? I would like to ask you uh, a little, a couple questions, just to confirm something. Uh, first, um, who is the owner of the property? Living in Bryant. Okay, so, so from from twenty 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 uh, now from twenty ten to twenty sixteen, so uh, this property was used as a family dwelling for multiple families. I'm sorry, family what? Uh, fam family dwelling for multiple uh, for for just for your extended families as you said everybody in our family just about lived in one of my daughters everybody who didn't have a place to stay <laughs> okay so yeah. but they're all family members so that's what we're doing. Yeah, they're all family members everybody so, said my grandma was yeah, i'm sorry because i am a born again christian i love my family my mother gave it to me in 1996 and everybody was signed over to me Okay. And I have a house at, at 49th and Fairmont Avenue. So I just want to make sure that so no part of the, uh, whenever, the property is rented out. No, no. Whenever they needed a place to stay, I gave them. Uh, we, uh, thank you. Uh, did, did you uh, have any uh, utility bills? Uh, did you bring any utility bills showing that uh, your, your oh, name is on there? Today, my name, today even, yeah. even now, mom, he's asking do you have them, and I will check. I'm sure I do. If not, I can email them to you because I got them on my phone. Um, Based for the years like 2010 to 2016, which is in dispute. You know what? I do. Um, I don't have an actual bill, but you know what? Pico did give us when we asked them. They sent us an email of the like. I don't know. It was like a, a uh, Excel sheet telling like this year and what was paid, they, that's all they gave us. They didn't back up no bills. Because when my sister-in-law moved there in 2008, and it was a claim she wrote the year she was there. My mom made her get the bills on her name. She, she had five kids. kids. She had five kids. My, my son was out there doing his thing and I couldn't leave them out in the street. So just to be clear, do you, do you currently have any bills for 2010 to 2016, this period, 2010 to 2016? No, but I'm sure we can get it. They're available. No, they actually aren't available. But there is a uh, a letter that we got from Pico. It's on an email. But we're that concerned. Confirmed that was it was a resident and we that she was living there. Because that's what somebody asked us to get the details if you can get a bill. She asked us when I went down, and the reason why they stopped the uh, or the the reason why the city gave my mom the. <coughs> agreement to, to not have to pay for the trash anymore was because of the fact that she lived there. They said, if you can 
Because they only allowed, they took it back. I thought they took it back to 2016. Okay. Can we, let's, let's narrow this conversation. Okay. What council is asking you for from the city of Philadelphia, he's asking you for proof of bills of some type of documentation that your mother who owns the property was residing there from 2010 to 2016. You've already said, no, you cannot provide that. Well, but you provided testimony that as of 1996, that the business that was operated in front of the house was no longer um, utilized and that you've had multiple family members of your family residing in that home over the years. So not, not 1996, not, not 2016. We, I can probably get bills dated back to maybe 2013. Because that's well, what, what matters the most to us is the periods of, at issue for the six years of 2010 to 2016. That's all we really care about as far as are there any bills showing that your mother was residing there during that six year period? I'm sure I can produce some. 2010 to 20, what? 2016. 16. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I've been, I've been paying I've been her bills since bills. she, no, no, I've been paying her bills for her since she went on dialysis. And I do keep a good record physically. I'm I don't know. Nine years on dialysis. I, I can get that. So if y'all allow me some time, I can get it. I'm sure. I can have it by the day. I can go down there. Okay. Uh, City, do you have any testimony that you want to enter? Oh, sorry. You yeah. want to go to the back room? Okay. All right. Yeah, let's because they don't have what they need. And, you know, maybe if we give them requisite time to give us what they need, then we could do this kind of, you know. Before we go to the back, I do have one question. City, can you tell us if, if and when this petitioner was approved for UPA for this property? Uh, Ms. Gordon, can you provide that information? It looks like September 2022. That's when the UPA agreement was approved? That's what the note says. It was an adjustment made due to the agreement. Not adjustment, but it was the agreement was entered in 2022. So that 2022 is probably an update. And she's been on UPA since probably five years, maybe? Four years. So UPA is an owner occupied something payment agreement. Yeah. So we she's been on that. That that haven't happened last year. That I've been on that. That's, so that's so you year. you think it's before 2022? Um I I'm I'm assuming it was like maybe 15 or because we were she was at a um situation where we, she was ready to lose the property. It was ready to put it on a sheriff's sale. When did we come down here? Remember? A couple years ago. We, she almost lost this house. Almost lost it. So it, it, like I said, they hooked us up and gave us every everything we needed. A ton of pamphlets like this, and I signed my mom up for everyone. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uber for a very long time. I'm sorry, but I don't believe UPA even existed in 2015. Well, she was on some type of, of owner occupied or some kind of agreement. 2022 was last year, so yeah, we've been on it a couple of years. So it was definitely way before then. An adjustment may have been made in 2022, but yeah, she's been on it for 10 years. Does the board want to go back still? I have one last question and then I'm ready to go back. Um, Mr. Pang or Ms. Gordine, what's the current state of the billing? How is it um, now? There are exemptions uh, that were applied for 2017 up until now. And so there's a zero balance due, due to exemptions that were put in place that were applied for. And what exemption, if you know? The refuse exemption. Right, but because it's a residential property owner occupied or for some other? Uh, yeah, it's a mix. It says it's a commercial property, but they, they put in, I guess, residential that they live there. Thank you. Okay, if everyone can just hold tight for a moment, the board is going to the back. I don't think I think this would be the right No, you remember when the water company said we can put you on the phone with someone? Because you have a business, this is a business property. They came in and looked at their store and said, oh, well, she's not a business owner. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the kind of papers I need to run for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
because I have a visual impairment, she takes care of everything. So Is everyone back? Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you. The board's reached a decision. It's our decision to abate the entire bill from 2010 through 2016. That includes principal, interest, and penalty. Do I have concurrence from the other board members on this? Paula Weiss, I concur. Dominique Ward, I concur. And is Ryan still there or is he, he had to step out? I, he had to step out, but he did in fact concur with this decision. That, that's what I thought he concurred right before we came back to the uh, to the full board um, and Nancy Cameron I concur you'll get a letter from us that spells out our decision both sides do have the right to appeal to the court of common pleas within 30 days of the date of that letter but I'm going to assume for the moment that neither side will choose to appeal and if that proves to be the case then at the end of of that time period these amounts from 2010 through 2016 should be abated from the record. You'll get a letter from us that spells out our decision. Both and as I've indicated, both sides could appeal, but I'll, with the, the assumption that neither side is going to appeal, this should be executed after the um, or during the waiting period. And uh, we've had concurrence from my fellow board members. So unless there are questions, I think that covers the issue for um, this part of the hearing. Any questions? No, nope. okay. Thank you very much for coming in today. We appreciate your coming and, and, uh, and joining with us to review this information. Thank you, guys. Thank you. God bless okay, you, you'll get that letter from us probably within two about two weeks. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. You can head out then. <laughs> it is approximately 3 04 p.m. There is nobody here in the office of 100 South Broad Street, and there is no one in the waiting room of the Zoom. Um, so at this time, we, we can call the other two cases. Okay, fine. Thank you. Um, item number one, the last four digits of the docket are 6698, property address 40 East Pastoria Street. Owner is listed as Antoinette Barksdale. Um, have we had any prior information on this item that we should be aware of before we go forward? Mr. Payne? You're on mute, Mr. Payne. We're looking at case number one. Do you have yeah. any information that would enlighten us about the status on this? The uh, for this case, we we didn't get in contact with the uh, petitioner, but uh, uh, the city will um, the city will zero out uh, the um, the refuse bills from 2019 for to 2021 because. Um, the during this period the uh structure is empty lot is an empty lot there's no structure on the property so uh we will adjust adjust those numbers uh sh uh shortly and other than that there's uh the case was previously adjudicated by a uh i think is somewhere in the uh july of 2019 by a master 
and it was uh, uh, 50% payment to IMP. And other than that, um, so, so you what, don't, what were the years again when it was an empty pro empty property lot? Uh, from pretty from 2019 onward, they receive a demolition license around uh, September October. Okay, and I then just wanted the, to uh, get yeah. a note on on when that was. And and for those earlier years again, are those amounts going to still be due and owing? Yes. So is this the deny did not appear? Yes, I just want to know for the record that this was previously marked no further continuances by the board. So there will be no further, I would say deny did not appear, no further hearings to be scheduled. Okay. Okay. Um, concur? Paula, do you concur? Yes. Oh, and Nancy Cameron, I concur. And we had a concurrence from Dominic Ward. She had to uh, step aside for uh, a, a phone call, but she concurred in our decision before um, before she left. Okay. And then other item that is uh, still on the agenda. It's for case number four, last four digits of the docket eight six two one. Property address is twenty seven forty three Germantown Avenue. Property owner is listed as Sai Ab. Darahaman, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and this is potentially a re-hearing. We had had a hearing before, and, and there were some questions. We were going to be open to hearing um, at this at this meeting if they appeared. Um, Melissa, can you give us some further information on that in terms of uh, of whether there's any reason to do anything other than deny it for denying this for failure to appear? Uh, may no. I? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I should have asked for your comments too. Also, for this case, there's also a prior case. Uh, it's a 14 STMERZZ7470. It was uh, uh, concerning uh, refuse bill from 2010 to 2016. And um, the hearing took place roughly uh, on or about uh, November 30th, 2016. Uh, so the this city would like to have the the period the periods adjudicated for the uh, for this uh, for this hearing to be um, to they, they were prior prior adjudicated and they yeah were, they're prior adjudicated would like to uh, the board to not consider the the, the period uh, we, from 2010 we, to 2020. We had already put them yeah. aside as not being considered even if they had shown up for the more recent ones. So. Uh, no, there was, this is just this was just a rehearing off of the board hearing, and we had approved it. So I, at this point, I would. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I mis I misunderstood. Um, I would just deny for failure to appear. Um, what about further? Oh, and, and as this was a rehearing of the board decision, I would I would mark it no further continuances, no further rehearings. No further hearings. I would concur with that. Denied for failure to appear with uh, no further hearings to be listed. Paula Weiss. Okay. Did we have anything from, um, uh, excuse me, did we have anything from Dominique before she left on this I mean, one? She had just said that she was going to deny both of them because she. Okay. Was but I, I thought I heard that, but I wanted to have confirmation on that. And Nancy Cameron, you know, I concur. So that means that this, uh, that both one and four are denied for not failure to appear and no further hearings. And that being the last of the items on today's agenda, unless uh, missing something, I'll pause for a moment in case anyone has anything. No, okay, then that means this hearing is adjourned. Thank you all for your participation. See you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.